Hey guys, super quick update from the office, uh, <laughs> my home office. I promised the viewer I would give uh, a little update on the dehydrator that I'm using, so we're gonna do a really quick video on that. Okay, so just quickly, this is my embarrassing scrap pile, where I just pick up random wood that people leave on the uh, side of the road, made a, a shed of pallets and put a tarp over it, and the tarp lasted a really long time, like half a season. That's what happens to cheap tarps. Um, I'm showing you this because I also picked this up, this scrap piece of metal. Um, it's just a, like an old transformer box or something like that that was on the side of the road and I thought that would be a perfect solar dehydrator. So I was going to make a solar dehydrator. Um, and the idea is that you, you know, weld in or connect a lower area and you put a glass there and uh, that'll heat the air up and then I think you put some kind of holes so that you have like airflow and then a chimney out the top and then the inside is just a bunch of racks so you put your food on the racks and you paint this little lower area black and you put the glass over top so that the sun warms that up natural convection will draw that air up and out and you make a chimney effect and that chimney effect of warm air will basically dehydrate your food so that was the plan with this thing um, and then my sister-in-law over at Gardening in the North got a dehydrator and was raving about it, so my wife picked one up. Now, I don't mind that too much because I've heard um, some stories from people who've done solar dehydrators that um, you get a bunch of bugs crawling in there, finding it, uh, you know, raccoons will get in there, birds will be in there pooping on everything. So, I don't know, you know, they'll get in somehow, like life gets in, mice get in a crack that big. So let me know in the comment section below if you have a solar dehydrator and let all the viewers know what your experiences are with them. Um, for now, my wife got this other one, so we're going to try it out. Now, the other idea behind the dehydrating the food is that throughout the day, especially with COVID and the kids being home, um, they'll get up and go grab like snacks constantly. So we thought, uh, wouldn't it be nice if we had a bunch of basically, you know, candy that's just a dehydrated peach or something like that. So that's the idea. Uh, it's mostly to get the kids eating healthy. And then also um, I kind of personally want to dehydrate the sea buckthorn and use that as like dried um, vitamins for my kids. So they have a couple of those a day. Uh, and my wife, she doesn't like the taste so much. She likes it in some stuff like in tea, she really likes it, but raw, she, won't, she doesn't really like it. But I did dehydrate some and we'll check it out. And uh, she had some, and they're actually, they get a little bit of a sweetness to them. So they're actually quite good. And uh, I think we'll probably try to dehydrate most of them, to be honest, and then freeze some for, for teas. And by tea, um, we make a tea out of the leaves, like a proper tea. But if anyone knows kind of what um, the Chinese kind of do with goji berries, they'll put goji berries, like dehydrated goji berries in a tea, and it'll just float there, kind of like, you know, bubble tea or something like that. Um, and then the idea is you drink your tea and at the end you kind of gobble up all the berries that are like saturated with the tea water. That's actually really good with sea buckthorn because the flavor is incredible. And then at the end, that little berry is just like a little vitamin bomb. So um, that's kind of what I mean by uh, using the berries specifically for tea. All right, so this is the unit we got. Um, I'm not affiliated with these people at all. Um, I've also not even really used this uh, besides a couple days now. It's an Excalibur, and um, forgive the glare uh, on the front there, but this is basically um, what you get with it. A couple like dehydrating guides, which were actually really interesting reads, pretty good, because I'm new to all this. And how it works is you basically turn it on here for a timer and set the temperature, and it's got a little guide to show you what stuff you should set the temperature for. And the unit is 440 watts, so that means roughly two hours of a dry, which is sometimes good for like apples and stuff I found. Uh, that's about, you know, roughly a kilowatt hour of electricity, which is important to me. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to get the, the uh, solar dehydrator. So then it comes with these trays, and you've got the little insert here, and uh, we're drying some sea buckthorn up here. There's still... Still have some moisture in them, so we'll have to run it through another couple hours. We've got apples. Um, now my wife had put them on this wax paper, but I don't think that's, I don't think that that's proper because you need the airflow coming up through the fruit to dry them out. 
And uh, one thing that we've learned also is that we're gonna cut them thicker because little chunks are much tastier. Like very good, it's kind of got a consistency like a gummy bear, pretty good. Um, we did some um, peaches that are, were on the second tray here, or, or actually two trays. No, just this one, just one. And then now I went around to the garden, just grabbed some random stuff, some blackberries. And um, these are some grapes that we did a couple days ago. And like the flavor is incredible. Like that is so much better than a raisin you'd get in the store. Here's some autumn olive berries. So these are very high in fiber. So we're trying those out. These are the sea buckthorn. And look at the difference in the sea buckthorn. This is the name variety that Chuxaya. If you see my video that I did yesterday on it. And these are the other ones. Um, was it Hergo? Those are the other ones. These ones are very sweet when they're dehydrated. They're actually really good. This one, I'm not sure yet, the big one. And I'll try that one after. And then um, I'm also dehydrating some wine cap. And I figured I'd just pulse this in a blender, turn it into powder. It's a good way to trick my kids into eating mushrooms, which they don't like. So I tried to kind of load this up with a bunch of stuff as much as I, you know, a bunch of random stuff just to try them out, see what we like, and then we'll do some bigger runs. Because I want, anytime this is on, sucking electricity out, that I want maximum usage out of it. I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a crazy person like that. I don't like... Um, wasting electricity. So overall first impressions, very good. Um, it's really quick. I, I know a solar dehydrator, you gotta maybe leave it out there for a day or longer and then animals might get at it. This you crack it on, it takes five to ten cents worth of electricity to make a, like five or nine trays worth of peaches. So I mean might file that one under you know the whole it's kind of cool to do a solar dehydrator but an electric dehydrator it's really a fair like it's a relatively low energy draw and definitely a huge fan of the peaches we did a big run of peaches and the kids already ate like all of them they gobbled them up which is good because then they're not eating gummy worms or something like that they're eating like healthy food so so far i'm really liking it thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one